Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we start yet another build. It involves this bad boy. What are we doing? Well, let me rephrase that. It involves these bad boys. What are we doing? Well, you'll have to come right back and find out. So let's take a look at these cars. 1932 Ford Coupe. Metal base, metal body, plastic fenders of course. At least I'm assuming we'll, we'll figure that out when we get there, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But this car is not going to stay. This, what is this, a wrestler? Mundo Lucha by Hot Wheels. It's pretty cool, but it's not going to stay this way. Not going to stay this way at all. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it's got three it's got the saw blade rims on it but we're going to make this car into this car and with this car is very iconic it's been seen in videos and everything what is it it's the zz top car yes the iconic zz top car metal base and everything this will have to go of course in the the lime away mixture this one i'll probably just prime and paint to match the the body of the car but yeah, this is going. This one is going to be a straight-up restoration. I hope I can find some black wall wheels for it. If I can't, then I'll have to put on some red lines or something along that line. But this one is completely different than this one. They look the same, but they're different. If you look at the base, the car on the right has two posts, which is the newer one. The one on the left is the red line one. They're not interchangeable because of just one post. You can see the, the hook on the back where the bumper goes. It holds it on on the red line one compared to the one on the right, the new one, which uses a post to hold it on. So none of these parts are interchangeable except for maybe the interior, the glass, and the engine. <clears throat> but yeah, that's what we've got. That's what we're working with. All right, got me two boxes here so I can keep everything separated. One of these cars is going to be for Mr. Jeff Brummett. That's going to be the restoration. And got one for me. That's going to be a custom one, if you will. Because I'm not certain about the wheels, but it's definitely not going to stay original to the ZZ Top. Yes, it'll have decals on it, and it'll be red. But outside of that, anything is fair game. But the first thing you can, got to do, you know, is get these apart. So let's get to drilling them. And like I said, these things are not interchangeable, so that's why I want to keep them separated. But a little dab of oil will help keep the, the drill bit lubricated and it helps it actually cut better, believe it or not. If you've never drilled a car apart, definitely oil it because it, it helps the drill bit last a lot longer. Now let's work on the red line one. I, whenever you do a restoration, I recommend always taking good photos that way you can see anything that you need to remember like where the decals started how high they are how low they are and and you'll see in this vi video that it actually saves me in the end because as I looked at when I was doing the decals on my car it just really helped so anytime you do an old car be sure to if it's gonna be a restoration take pictures Alright, got the first one apart. This is going to be mine. As you can see, it's just two posts. Definitely plastic fenders. Definitely plastic fenders. And the interior is great. It's, it's new, of course, but it's not going to stay that color. So we'll put it over here in the container. Got the engine that's held in by the first post. And this one is perfect. I, I might swap it for the one on Jeff's car. Just because, like I said, mine's going to be custom and everything. And this looks like brand new, so it should... It should work in his. We'll see. But yeah, here's the body and the base. I'll have to grind those posts off so I can swap the wheels. But the next step is is to get this thing drilled and tapped. And you can see there's not much on that back post. So go slow, take your time. And here is the original one. Uh, this little one post is fighting me, but we're gonna get it. We we'll never let it whoop us. Whenever you're doing prying, be very careful because remember these defenders and stuff are plastic. But yeah, we're going to get it. I'm not going to let it whoop me. Just about there now. Drill it out just a little bit more. Just 
there we go popped right apart but there's that one like I said it's metal base it'll have to go in the lime away to get it cleaned again then we'll polish it up nice and clean and then we'll clear coat it that way the polish job will last a long long time but one post held on by the rear tab as you can see nice base they did a great job on this one the wheels eh, they, they, they've been used they've been played with just giving it a once over seeing what I need to do to it if there's anything I need to fix or anything at this point and there's not but here's the difference between the bases you can see the two posts but I'm not trying to pass that off as a, a original I'm just wanting to make it in my own ZZ top but there's his car you can see this was being used it's dirty it's, it's scuffed so we might sand it a little bit we'll definitely hit it with some soap and water and see how it looks after that if it looks good we'll leave it as is if it looks bad then we'll we'll paint it prime it and paint it and I'll definitely have to scuff up this and and paint it because it's got scratches and it it, it needs some love <laughs> but here's the engine again like I was telling you it looks just like the other one but you can see some of the chromes wore off and whatnot so I'll probably swap that out the glass I'm gonna try polishing and dipping in the floor shine because it's got some marks and stuff on it I might not be able to get it all the way out but I'll get it most of the way out and yeah one post all right big boys out of the stripper this is what it looks like you can see we got to clean up some stuff a little bit of sister sister strip and paint still left in there but the main thing is we're just wanting to check for casting lines which there's some major ones right there on both sides and it goes all the way down Ooh, it's going to take a lot of work to get rid of but let's get it cleaned up so we can see what we're going to do as always a brush normally takes care of everything if not take a pick This little car is going to need a lot of work to get rid of that casting line. The car itself is great. That dang casting line, if you... We could leave it. Prime it and paint it. Be done with it. Put decals on it, of course, but... Practice makes perfect anyway, so we'll probably try to get rid of them. Got it stripped down with the steel wool so we can see what we're dealing with. Go around this hole a little bit. I didn't really don't see anything bad except for that casting line. No deep gouges, just the normal um, pitting from the casting. I know I can get rid of that. I know I can get rid of that. But if I come back here and try to do it, it might start digging into the rumble seat. Let's see here. I'm just gonna hold it on here and see. Now I can get it. Let me start on the back. Probably making a big mistake. I need to hit that line anyway, so. If you ever decide to do this, make sure you got different grits of sandpaper. Course all the way down to fine because you are going to need it to get rid of the file scratches. You're not just going to go over one grit and say, hey, I got it. No, don't work that way. Let's see, something like that. What you're trying to do is find the angle to where when you file it, it is filing on the casting mark that way when you start seeing file marks on both sides of that you know you're getting rid of that line 
I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. See how it's starting to get bigger? The filing marks. Rather than just being on the casting mark, now it's going away. That's what we're looking for. Alright, that one's gone. Mixing up a little paint here, and as I do this, I want to discuss something with you because I need to let this sit for a minute anyway after I thin it down. For whatever reason, my paint has to be a little bit thinner than everybody else's to go through my brush, and I run the same pressures and everything. <coughs> but this is what we're using Createx Opaque Red. And I need to discuss this with you. Last time you saw, and I'll in insert some clips while I do this. I had mentioned where you actually saw me spray the everything black, seal it in black, because I wanted the red to be darker. And well, it's time for you to see a screw up clip, <laughs> a fail, if you will, because here at Old Man Diecast, typically whatever I try tends to work out. This time it is a complete fail. If you've ever watched any of my videos before, you'll understand, and I'm going to show you the body now. I went back and I redid it in white. And the reason I did this, and I'll just leave that there as I talk to you about this. I've mentioned it before, anytime you paint a car or anything, your base layer or your primer can have a direct result on the outcome of the paint. You want the paint to be darker. You use a darker base, you want it to be brighter, you use a brighter base, like a white or a pearl white, something along those lines. So I, I had it in my mind, and like I said, I'll be showing you the video as I talk about it, of spraying this car black and then going over it with the opaque red, which is exactly what I did. But as you can see in the video, I'm now up to, by the time I'm done, I'm up to five layers of red. And I'm not getting red. All I am getting is like a, a red oxide or a brown look, if you will. And typically the way you get brown is mixing yellow and black together. And that, you know, take a bunch of yellow and mix a couple drops of black and mix it up. And that'll give you brown. But, yeah, it failed. It was a disaster. So what I did was, whenever it was white. This paint is getting pretty thick now. But because I have white on it, and it... I say thick, but you can see it's really not that thick. Still got all the body lines and everything where they're supposed to be, and I'll wipe all this down before I spray it today. But if you go too thick, the paint will start looking funny. So I was building up the paint, building up the paint, and I knew that it wasn't going to work. So I went over it with white, and that's where we're at now. So... Let's get outside. We're going to spray these bad boys red. And if it's another fail because of the paint that I already have on here, then we'll just have to restrip it and repaint it, right? So I'm hoping we don't have to do that. But if we do, we do. I just wanted to show you a fail because, like I said, typically whatever I try works. This time it did not. It was a big fail. So I've got the paint mixed up. It's been sitting here for about 5-10 minutes. And that's what they normally recommend for you to let it sit. So let's get outside and go to spraying. So I brought the paint and the thinner out. Just in case I need to mix on the go. 
and there's the paint got everything set up start on the base like I always do turn the compressor on check my air pressure about 25 30 pounds move everything off it doesn't look bad I can't really see anywhere it's just a darker white it's not a pure white and that's again because the base coat is so dark I mean oh it was disheartening when I started spraying this and that was going on I was like oh no let's see how the day goes well we're definitely getting a red <laughs> and that's what we're after Oh yeah, much better. But I was disheartened when I seen that yesterday and it wasn't working. I was like, oh no. And what I'm trying to do is save it rather than going back in the stripper. I'm trying to keep from putting it back in the stripper. That's why I went over it with the white really quick yesterday. Now everything was dry, but I just went over it with the white to try to get everything to settle down. It was a mess, I'm telling you. I was, I was almost in tears. You know, I'm not looking to coat the whole thing right now. I'm just trying to give everything a, a light base for everything to stick to. All right, it's time for decals. As you can see, after that black sealer fiasco I had, it turned out really nice. Lots of detail. That's, that's one of the miracles about, well, not miracles, but that's one of the benefits of using an airbrush. You can put a bunch of coats on and still have all the detail like the molding lines the door jam lines everything's still there there's probably i put two coats of the black sealer on there and i know there's four coats of red on it then i threw on a coat a good heavy coat of the white on top of that to try to save it and then a good two coats of red on top of that so you know there's a lot of paint on that car you're not supposed to do that. I am not telling you to do that. I was just trying to save it. But here's the decals. Straight out of the video. ZZ Top. <laughs> and the way these go on. If you look, there's a slanted part. And that slanted part. Let me get the right one. That slanted part matches the slant on the cowl. Goes on just like so. Well, that's the wrong one. So, with that stated, let's get this bed boy on here. And if you remember, I took some pictures of this. Well, one picture of it right there. So that we can see exactly how the decal goes, how high it goes up, and everything. So there's no, there's no screwing around. We know exactly where this goes. So judging by that, I'm going to zoom in on it. Hopefully you can see it on the original. The bottom goes right over, right there, right over the hinge on the door. I don't know if I'm going to try to do that or if I'm going to try to go below it. We'll see how it fits. Matter of fact, let's look at it right now. That's that side. So as you can see, it's got that right there. So I don't, I don't know if I'm going to try to do that or not. Let's see how it looks on the car. I mean, it just barely goes past it. So, I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get it on there. So, let's get to it. At least now I know where it goes, how it goes. You can see it goes right up to the edge, right at the back of the cowl. Goes under the door handle. And underneath the 
top hands and right over the bottom hands. And that's why we take pictures of original stuff so we know what it looks like to start with. I can go right back to that if I need to. Got me a Q-tip for blotting. Got my water ready. Put my extra seeing eye dogs on so I can see. Extra. <laughs> water. So. Let's see. This is the one I need. Yep, that's the one I need. So let's go to it. That's all we can do is try it. That's all we can do. I remember watching another channel do the same car and I don't know where he got his decals from, but he had a lot of overhang for some reason. I bought mine from Second Chance Redline, so they should go on pretty dang good. Should go on really, really well. Right up to the bottom of the door. And there we go. Right over to the edge of the cow. I could go over just a hair more. Like so. I am more than happy with that. But look how good that looks. Now we're going to do is the other side. <laughs> and that's going to go just like so. Same process, just different side. I'm going to raise this up just a hair so it's not laying directly on the workbench because I want the other side to not get scuffed. But mine's going to be a custom, so it's going to have different wheels. I may use the wheels off the Han Solo car, and I'll show them to you here in just a minute. I may use some really big ones on the back and some really small ones on the front to make it look like a hot rod. I don't know yet. I don't know what direction I'm going to go. I'll know that whenever I get this clear coated and go to putting it together. That's typically how things work with me. I don't know if the other channel made his own decals or what happened with him. I see this one I is going just over the hinge. Yeah, I should have raised that up just a hair. Oh well. This one's laying perfect just over the hinge. Now this one, no problem. I'll let it dry and I'll come back and hit I need to do it anyway. Put some micro saw right on the door jams so that or even come back with a razor knife and cut it that way it lays down in there nice and flat but yeah look how good that's looking oh my goodness that looks so good and if i can remember i'll try to insert the video clip of the zz top car in while i'm doing this just for your enjoyment it was in a few of their videos. It wasn't in a bunch. It was in a few of them. But the main one you'll remember it from is She's Got Legs. That's where I first saw this car. And I saw it on one of their album covers. So there's mine. You can tell the difference between mine because it's got two posts. Mr. Brummett's has one post. So I'm going to set that over there and let it dry for about 15 minutes. And I'll come back and put the microsaw on it. And now we have two ZZ Top cars. Now all I gotta do is let it dry and like I said, hit it with the micro saw and those bad boys will be finished. All I have to do is some 2K clear and final assembly. Throw some clear on these.
Well, let's see if we can do something with this base. As you can see, it's not in bad shape. I need to try to get that little bit of rust or whatever that is off there. Any, any buildup from handling or anything like that, then I'll polish it, of course. And then I'm going to clear coat it. I don't have any of the Renaissance wax, so I'll just clear coat it. So we're just going to drop it down in there. And I don't have lime away. Couldn't find any locally, so I bought CLR, which is pretty much the same thing. So, just going to cover it up. Let's sit there for a few minutes and come back in and brush it. And it's been about five minutes so I'm gonna take it out and scrub it as you can see it's still working really really well but I don't want it to eat the metal away either so all we're trying to do is clean it and as you can see I got fresh water sitting right there but look how much cleaner that already looks I'm just gonna take it and I do not recommend you doing this without gloves this is just me like I said I got fresh water sitting right there Just go over it with the toothbrush real good to get it in the cracks and everything. Rinse it in the clean water as well as the hand. Then we'll dry this bad boy off and see what we have. Get it nice and dry for you. Now it's dependent on you on how long you want to leave it in there, but I didn't see any need in leaving it more than five minutes because all the dirt and grime, everything's gone. I'm down to the metal, which is what I'm looking for. It's not going to polish it. It's not like a zinc polish. It's not zinc plating. I just wanted a clean surface to start with, and that's what I have. Now we'll take it inside and we'll hit it with the flitz polish. I just got everything put up and then I was like, well, let's do this outside. It's such a nice afternoon. So there's the base. Nice and clean. It even feels clean. And it doesn't take much of this. Just take a dab of it. And just rub it all over the car. I'll start with the back half. And then it should turn black and then it should start going polished. It turning black actually lets you know that it's working, believe it or not. You wipe that off and you can see exactly what we have. And of course we'll run this under water with the toothbrush so that we can get it out of all the letters and stuff. But look at how much difference that looks already. So stay tuned. I'm going to hit this up and be right back. All right, just took it inside and rinsed it off and hit it with the toothbrush. As you can see, the toothbrush is now black. That's all right, it'll clean next time I use some kind of chemical. Now, I'm not expecting perfection with this because there's a lot of little nooks and crannies. But I am expecting for it to be a lot better than what it was. So let's see. I rinsed it off in the sink. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. And you want to throw a clear coat on there. Like I said, I'm not going for a mirror shine because this is a older base that's been well loved anyway. 
And as you can see, there's a lot of pitting and stuff in there. So I don't want to try to polish all that out because I actually might do more harm than good. The toothbrush is still damp, so I can go in and if I see where I need to work a little more, I can. Yeah, this is going to get run through soap and water again and then it'll get clear coated because like I said, I don't have any of the um, Renaissance wax. And anytime you polish anything like this, if you don't put something on it to protect it, it will oxidize again and very rapidly. So here's what we got. I have two sets of these Han Solo wheels. And it comes with the medium and the small. Or large and medium, whichever it is, I forget. Anyhow, can't I mean I could, but it, it just it doesn't look right, so I'm gonna go with the the two front ones. I'm gonna say small. And it's gonna work really well because it's the same exact width as the car base already. So all I have to do is put it in there and glue it in. And then I can put mine together and be done with it. So let's get to it. As always, you want to double check and make sure everything is going to fit properly. As you can see, that just snaps right in there. Plenty of space on the sides without being too much. So there's the rear. Now let's check the fronts. And same thing. They basically just drop right in. So a, I really don't even need to glue these in. But I'm going to just because... I had to grind the tabs off. So the perfect thing for doing that, if you don't have any special jigs or anything, is a little paint bottle, medicine bottle, anything you have along that line. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the axle out, put a dab of glue in it, and then put the axle back in. Just because that's how I like to do it like that, because if you put it on top, it can interfe eventually interfere with the interior going back in and everything sitting right and all that great stuff so we want to keep it simple the old kiss method keep it simple stupid trying to get my super glue opened up because it's about shot it's about all gone i might even go ahead and throw it away after this one we'll see But I like to put it in the track. And thank goodness this time I didn't have to build an axle tube. Metal bases makes it a little harder. So I'm thinking about doing metal bases a little different. Next time I need to do an axle tube. And I'll explain that method to you when we get there. But just center it. Make sure it's in there correctly. And let that one dry. And I have some of the Insta set, and I'll probably put a dab or two on it after I do this, but I'm just trying to get this all glued in for right now. And my glue is about gone. Like I said, this tube is about shot. Yeah, see, it won't even come out now. It's done dry and hardening the tip that quick to where it doesn't want to come out. Hey, buddy. Yeah, super glue dried on me again. Dang stuff. I just take a hat pen and run back in it. And then it's good to go most of the time. Make sure I didn't move that. There we go. Sorry for moving around so much. Snap it back in, hold it down for a second, make sure it's nice and flat, and let it set. Now she's been sitting for a few minutes while I get everything ready. I'm going to put this together, and I'm going to show you mine and Jeff's at the same time. Nah, I wouldn't do it that way. I'm going to go ahead and show you mine, and then I'll show you Jeff's. Alright, next step is, is getting this bad boy assembled, and... I'll go ahead and show you how it looks now. Look at that beauty. 
Is that not just soaking wet looking or what? I mean, whoa! That 2K clear does the trick. And with that stated, that's all you're going to see of it until the final reveal because mine and Jeff's are going to look pretty much the same with the exception is his is going to have original black walls on it. Well, not original to his. I actually ordered another car and I'm going to rob it's still in the pack so I'm going to rob the wheels off of it and put those on and then I'll have the brand new casting for something else. But with that stated, you know, this will be the last time you see this car until his is completed. But the reason we went with these wheels, and I'll show you real quick. I showed them to the wife. I showed her the two options. I was going to go with something like what I have on Andrew's car and just crumb them. But the wife and I both looked at them and she's like, those just look better. You need to go with those. So that's why I did. Anytime I have a question about something like that, I always ask her. And she's never steered me wrong. So, but that's the last time you're going to see this until we finish Jeff's car. I'm going to put mine together now. And go ahead and take off my tape. And we'll see you when we go to assemble his. Well, if you can't tell by the background, it is time to get this car finished. And of course, we'll have the turntable at the end showing the two cars finished. But here's what we have. This is after the clear coating and everything. Look at how beautiful that thing looks. I mean, just look at that. Everything matches. Everything looks good. I have the wheels on the base. That looks good. She rolls really good. So that's taken care of. Now all that's left is some final assembly. So while I do that, you know the routine. Let's show what we started with and everything. I mean, it was a it was a very nice car. I greatly appreciate Jeff letting me do this for him. It's a beautiful car and everything. But she needed some love. She's been she's been played with. She needed some love and everything. But you know, know how it is. It can't stay that way. We have to make it look better because we want this to last another generation. So that's what we did. We took the car apart. Sanded it, stripped it, I filed off the casting marks, primed it, painted it, decaled it, and clear coated it. And I'd like to thank Jeff for allowing me to do this. I would like to thank him again for sending me a car to make into mine, which is the number two car of this. And yeah, it just turned out so great. I'm, I'm pleased with both of them. I'd like to thank him for the opportunity to let me do it. I'd like to thank you for watching and Follow me along on this journey. So here's the here's the finest final product. Mm -hmm.